Hi everyone. So today we'll be talking about Automation Anyways Credential Vault. So what's its purpose? What are its components? Locker, credential, and its attributes. So the purpose of Credential Vault is to store and use credentials securely. So as you know, bot is like a user. So anytime bot logs into a website, bot needs a user ID and password. So what you would not want to do is store them in plain text. So anybody can see it and it can be exploited. So the best practice for using credential values is to store them in credential vault. And the credential vault is stored, the credential in a credential vault is stored in an very secure encrypted format. The first important component of credential vault is locker. So think of it locker as a security mechanism to give control to credentials. So it can be group of users or role who can access those lockers. And there are different roles for that like owners, manager, participants. But our main focus is consumer. The consumer is the part runner who would use the credentials so when the pod runs this is the role which will be checked to make sure bot can use them and bot can run based on those credentials the other component is the credential and its attribute so typically it is a username password which can have other values like url etc so when we'll go to the code part you'll see uh, it can be standard or it can be user defined and you can mask it or not, not mask it depending on your needs. When mask it, nobody can see it. When it's standard, anybody can read it with like a plain text. And uh, the important part is user defined. So uh, user defined means that when you have multiple bot runners and you want to make sure that every bot runner uses its own credential attribute, for example, password or username, not use the same one across multiple bot runners. So that's a useful feature to use when you want to differentiate which bot runner logged into the website. Okay, so let's go to the control room and create a locker, create a credential, and then create attributes, and then finally we'll create a bot that will use those attributes. Now I need to go to manage and there is a link for credentials you click on that there are multiple tabs so i'll firstly create a locker i'll click on create a locker let's name it sample locker then let's go to the as i mentioned earlier owners by default will be who is creating locker and they typically have all the functionality they can also add or remove other owners and then there are managers who have all the permission that owner have except they cannot add or remove owners or managers then participants are who can view this credentials or this locker and our main focus is consumer so the bots which are or the users which are inside these roles will be able to use them in their bots so i have a finance locker let me move it here and then create a locker so any bot user who is under finance locker can use the credentials so we create a locker we go back to the credentials and let me create a credential let's call it sample credential and i'll add this locker here and then i'll add username and password so I'll provide the name username and standard so if standard you pass you can see the values typically username you can have standard and that is user provider if you make it like this so any bot runner will be using these credentials you can log in with that bot runner ID and you can provide these so that if you have multiple bot runner they can use the corresponding user provider ID for now I'll keep standard put the value test and let's not mask it and let's add another attribute let's say password and keep it standard but typically keep it mask so that 
nobody can see if they log in. So I created two attributes for the sample creation sample credential and create credential. So now you have a locker and a credential for that. Now we'll go to home and create a pot. So let's create a pot and let's name it sample sample pot using credentials. So let's uh, use a sample website. Let me open the website URL. This is the website. It has two fields, username and password. Move it away. And let me go back to the pot. So firstly, I'll record, capture those username and ID input text control. So let me refresh the windows. And then in the drop down, it will show the website that I have. I'll click on capture. Let's capture the username. Capture that. Now click on set text. And here I will select credentials. Select pick. You see now the locker is populated. Sample locker. If I click here, sample credential, you can select username. Confirm. So this, I'll do another drag for record capture application. It's already there. Like that. I'll click on capture objects. I'll capture the password field. So after the password field is captured, I'll say I need to set text. Again, similar thing. What I'll do is I'll pick the credentials, sample locker, credentials, the sample credential value, that attribute is password, confirm, I'll save it, and then drag one more, click on application, and let's capture the button for the login, and the action would be click, save it. I will run the port now. It's deploying to computer. And let's see if it's able to get credentials from the credential vault. So you see login is putting username, password and successfully submitted it. So as you have seen, we have not provided any credential values in plain text here. We are mapping it through Credential Vault. So it's a secure way to connect to Credential Vault and it is not exposed to anyone. I hope uh, this helped you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.